The GANF methodology was one of the tools that was identified to bring in inclusion within the coffee value chain. And uh, this came clearly after the gender analysis that was conducted when the PFC Practice for Change Solidaridad project was initiated. And uh, during that, the key issues that came clearly was that there were gaps that were within the households. There was no equal division of labor. The women were not participating actively together with, uh, with the males. And then also participation in the meetings was very low for the women. And then also there was less access to resources, productive resources uh, for this case, for the women. So there was need to break these barriers uh, to, to be able to achieve what the project wanted, and that was inclusion. These gender gaps that were identified during the analysis were fueled mainly because uh, of the social construct within the Sebe region, where the male uh, takes dominance over the women participation. The households were taken through training. The aim of the training was to capacitate the participants with skills and knowledge on the GATH methodology. The training helped to break the barriers that were existing, that were limiting the participation of women. The training also helped to bring in balance in gender relations and also create togetherness within the households. At first, the males used to dominate uh, in their home. Most of the resources, like DC coffee, crop. In our place, they had called it men's crop. When we came back from the training, our men learned that it is important that we we share these resources. And I was allocated this plot, and I can proudly manage it, sell the coffee, and then we use the income together at home here. So I'm happy. I am now empowered as a woman. The enterprises that these households came up with were mainly diversification enterprises. So these households identified ventures such as kitchen gardens, and uh, the aim of the kitchen gardens was basically to provide the households with the nutrition. So this is how we established the kitchen garden, and uh, we are going to demonstrate. This is topsoil. I do like this. So after filling it, I have the seedling. I put here three, like three of them. And I water now. Together we were with him. The husband, I also involved the big children. We got the small stones, the small aggregates, put at the base of the sack. That one is for the purpose of draining away the water. And then filled the sack with the topsoil, which is fertile. So I planted on top. That was acting as a nursery bed. And then after it had germinated, like after three weeks, I now transplanted. So this is my small garden, an extension from the other backyard garden at home. I've planted these onions on a small scale. I've planted some tomatoes, and this one also improves on our nutrition. The surplus from the kitchen gardens, uh, the households are also able to sell and be able to get extra income. And in such a way, they actually save from the money that they were supposed to spend in buying uh, uh, vegetables, foods for their households. And the savings from that, they invest it back into the VSLA groups, which uh, most of the women are actually involved in. These VSLA groups also enable them to be able to borrow money and invest back into the interventions that they have uh, within the coffee and also the kitchen gardens. The second enterprise that was identified by some of the households was the GOATS diversification enterprise. And mainly this focused on the women. So through the support of the PFC project, households requested that we offer the BOA improved HIGOTS. 
the boa he goats are able to cross with the local she goats to give better superior offsprings with a better growth rate the households were able to improve their household income because they sold some of the goats we have a goat which is of a, a hybrid we have started breeding it with the locals we were also given the caliandra trees it is so nutritional to the goats so we have planted it another diversification enterprise that we supported the the women households was the matoke and that is bananas this is the, my matoke plantation this is bogoya which is eaten as a fruits the ripe type it also helps us in, in a, selling and earning income. The households were supported with beans and that was Nabe 16, which most of them have actually already harvested. In conclusion, the gender action learning systems should be encouraged in other projects because it is a, a participatory household stroke community led tool which is used to bring about positive transformation within the mindset and since it operates with the principle of inclusion this helps to bring in both man and woman to participate within the coffee value chain and also ensure that they have other interventions and the woman co-works together for the benefit of her family. I am Dr. Catherine Odenyo Ndekera and I'm the Gender Inclusivity Advisor, Solidaridad East and Central Africa. We are looking at the empowerment tools for women in the video that has just played and we see that one of the key empowerment tools is employment of women. It's very clear in the documentary, the women are within uh, the minds. It was a taboo in that community for women to come and get gainful employment within the mines. And yet that was a, a source of income for that particular community. So as we, we, we change societies, one of the things we aim at is to see that women are empowered. But for women to be empowered, they are particular empowerment processes or, or tools that women have to go through. And one of these is employment. Another key one is education. And, and education can be in various forms. It can be the formal education where you go through a standardized way of gaining your education. Academics are from various levels until university or even beyond. Education can also be in terms of uh, gaining skills, uh, gaining information and knowledge. And many of our women in the communities, we find them when actually they never got the formal education. So what we do is to utilize the empowerment tools of, of skilling them. So we skill them, we give them knowledge and uh, we give them information so that they can be empowered with knowledge, skills and information to be able to create businesses, to be able to get into gainful employment, for instance, in this case, in the mines. We also equip them uh, with skills to be able to have finance literacy so that even when they get the money, they know how to utilize it, they know how to save it. We also look at them getting into groups. Some of the groups are cooperatives, for instance, and uh, some of the groups can be the village saving and loans associations. So when women get into these groups, they actually get equipped with some informal skills that make them more assertive. But even then, they are even more able to participate in group dynamics. And some even end up taking up leadership positions. So when these women take up some of these positions, they even become more empowered and they even now start engaging on some of their needs, 
as individuals but also the needs of other women in the communities. So the empowerment tools that we use to empower women in our communities are very critical because they make this woman start now advocating for her needs but also they, they help her now get involved in the spaces, more especially in the business spaces in, in that community. Because without some of these empowerment tools, she is bound to get a lot of resistance because many times the doors are locked for women to enter in, in, in some of these spaces. But when we give her skills, when we give her the trainings, when we enable them to get into leadership positions, when we open up employment opportunities for them in places like mines, when we open up education opportunities for them, the woman becomes empowered. Thank you.